Hi guys, this is Dental Classes for you. Today we shall discuss on the topic Combination Syndrome. Combination Syndrome was described by Kelly in 1972. It is also referred to as Anterior Hyperfunction Syndrome. Now we will discuss the characteristic features of Combination Syndrome. Here the patient has an edentulous maxilla and it is opposed by natural mandibular anterior teeth. Okay. In this case, what are the characteristic features you observe? First of all, there is loss of bone from the anterior maxillary region. Also, there is overgrowth or downgrowth of the tuberosities. The hard palate mucosa shows papillary hyperplasia. As well as in the lower anterior teeth, there is extrusion seen and the loss of alveolar bone and ridge height is seen beneath the mandibular removable dental prosthesis basis. So these characteristics together forms what we call as combination syndrome. Here apart from these 5 cardinal features, there are 6 additional features put forward by Saunders et al. in 1978. They include loss of vertical dimension, occlusal plane discrepancy, anterior spatial repositioning of the mandible, loss of stability and refabrication of the existing dentures, epilis fissuratum and periodontal problems of the remaining teeth. In case you cannot remember all of this, I just made a mnemonic which says save OP. Now moving on to treatment planning, there are two factors in consideration. The systemic factors first. The systemic factors like diabetes and osteoporosis will increase the rate of bone resorption. Now the second is the dental factors. In dental factors what we have to consider is that in class 3 jaw relations there will be increased pressure in the anterior maxilla. So, when the lower anteriors are retained for a longer time, the patient is accustomed to biting in the anterior region. These parafunctional habits will increase the bone resorption. And the type of occlusion will also lead to a direct effect to the development of this syndrome. Now, moving on to rash name. Now, we have to prevent the rapid resorption of the bone. This can be done by increasing the stability of the denture by extension of the denture up to the retromolar pad as well as to prevent the excessive load in the anterior region you can provide a stable occlusion the posterior occlusion can be free of interfering contacts both during eccentric as well as centric movements and minimal contact in anterior teeth even during protrusive movement anterior teeth is used only for phonetics and aesthetics and patient education is most important Finally, the prevention. We have to retain as many posterior teeth as possible using endodontic as well as periodontal techniques. We can fabricate fixed prosthesis using endosseous implants in the lower posterior region as well as use tooth supported over dentures in lower arch. Regular recall visits and checkups with frequent relining can also be provided. So that's all about combination syndrome in a nutshell. For more videos, please like, share and subscribe to my channel.